Throwback to the 22nd of May, 2022. Good afternoon, everyone. I have arrived at Mitchum Common. It is now 11.53. I don't think I have ever arrived at a place this night, but it's because I was really tired from yesterday, so I had a little light in, and I didn't get up till half eight. I'm gonna walk around this common and see if there's anything interesting to see. Oh, so here is a map. Oh wow, I only walked for four minutes, and I already walked up to the top of the hill. I want to fly my drone here. And in this drone clip, I will be telling you a little history and information about this Mitchum Common. It is 182 hectares of common land situated in South London. It is predominantly in the London Borough of Merton, with parts straddling the borders of Croydon and Sutton. It is designated a site of metropolitan importance for nature conservation. In feudal times, the poorest, least productive soil in parish was designated as common land available for parishioners to graze animals and cut turf and timber for food. Members of this community with these rights were known as commoners. However, in the 19th century, when material for road building became a valuable resource, the old grazing land was replaced by a series of pits for gravel extraction. These works reached such a proportion that public opposition, led by George Parker Bitter, culminating in the protection of the common under the Metropolitan Commons Act, and the cost of its maintenance was split between the parish councils of Mitcham, Buddington, Wellington, and Croydon. Mitcham, now part of the London Borough of Merton, bears the majority of the cost. These funds support a warden and three assistants. Each council is represented by four nominated members of the board and elected every two years. The course of the Thames has gradually altered, exposing gravels that were initially colonized by grasses and other flowering plants. Over time, woody species slowly overwhelmed these early colonizers developing a loose, scrubby vegetation that became denser until woodland had developed. And that's all the time I've got to tell you about the history of this Mitchum Common. I've just seen the whole of the common and I think there's only like one pond here. Other than that, everything else is just like green grass. So, I think I'm gonna head to my next destination. I have arrived at the Norbury Park and I was reading this sign and it says this part of Croydon used to attract a lot of farmers from Kent, Surrey and Sussex to come here. And I also learned that there is a gravel garden but this way also leads to Stratham Common. So I think I'm gonna go anti-clockwise and see the pavilion. Ooh, there's a bicycle trail. There is a stone. It was actually placed here in 2015 and it was to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the formation of London Borough of Croydon. I might fly my drone here and learn about the history of Norbury because I asked a few pacifiers and no one seems to know that there is a pavilion here so I feel like there isn't actually a pavilion. And in this drone clip I will be telling you about the history of Norbury. The name Norbury derives from some local histories note that this was due to Norbury's position on the northern boundary of the former manor of Croydon. Others state that it takes its name from a split in the borough of Bensham, 
one of the former seven boroughs of Croydon. North Benchinson became the North Borough. South Benchinson later became Fortin Heath. For most of its history, Norbury was a rural countryside. At Hepworth Road, the intact road 30 feet wide was excavated in 1961. Remnants of a metal board across the stream was found further south at the Heritage Bridge on the River Bregney, which forms part of the boundary between Norbury and Shretham, before flowing onto the River Wendell, then the River Thames. Norbury Manor by the early 13th century, Norbury was a sub manor within the chief manor of Croydon. The first recorded mention of Norbury Manor was in 1229 when Peter D. Bendings conveyed the manor to John D. Kempsing and his wife Edonia, and it's referred to as the lands stretching out either side of the London Road. In 1269, the manor comprised 91 acres of Araba land in Poets Hill and 30 acres in Grandin, 55 acres of Pasture, 46 acres of Heathland, two acres of woodland, and 70 acres of better land. Mm, there is a farm. I wonder if we can go in. Probably not, because it's closed. Oh, so there is a boxing club over here. I think I have arrived at the Rookery Gardens, which is also linked to Street M Commons. So it's together. There's also a Rookery Cafe here, so I'm gonna go there and have lunch as it's like 20 minutes past two now. So this part is basically just wood, and I think I'm not gonna go there because it's just like football pitches and cricket pitches. So there's going to be nothing to see. So this is the information about this rockery garden. And I learned that it was actually opened to the public in 1913. And it was created by Major Mo Oh, so this is the formal gardens. And there's an old English garden and a wall garden as well. So I ordered a Fritza and I don't know what these are actually but I'm not an allergic to anything so that's it. There are actually some signs here and I feel like I'm not gonna go to that side. For the Palace Park there's no way I can walk there but I actually wanted to go to to take back Common and once we're coming today so I'm gonna keep heading back. I'll see if I can find the gardens but I hope I can. Um, so this is the formal garden and they are full of spurges. And I realized I haven't taken a photo today. So since this is so beautiful, I kind of want to get a photo and I'll take a photo there as well. Um, so this little area is the white garden. So I'm going to take a photo here. In the end, I ended up flying my drone here and showing you this rockery garden. So I will be telling you a little history about it. It is formerly the grounds of a large house that housed visitors to one of Shretham's historic mineral wells. The rockery is well known for its old cedar trees in the main garden. There is also a rock garden with a cascade and lower water garden dominated by giant genera. A series of walled gardens were created in part of the former kitchen gardens, including an old English garden and a white garden, which predates the more famous garden in the same style at Sissinghurst Castle. Actually, that is the old English garden. And um, they said there's still a fountain here. But then I feel like they changed all these flowers. 
Why though? They look so much prettier. And then the upper part is just like this. I want to go to that side as well. Wow, look at these rhododendrons. I haven't seen it in pink before. So I think I'm going to take a photo here. And I think this must be the other formal garden then. Oh, these are the ponds that were shown on the map. There are actually some fishes here. I know in Cantonese they're called gummy. Finally found the other pond. These are called water lilies. So there's actually a map here of where you can walk to. And they said you can walk or cycle all the way to New Cross Gate, but that is not my plan today. So if any of you guys want to do this, then this map is for you. Okay, so this is Stratton Memorial Garden and it is actually one part of the manor of Titanbeck and it was dated back since the early 15th century. It is then passed on to the Lambert Flora Council. I am walking to the Titanbeck Twitter and there is actually a St. Leonard Church here and I also walked past a Stratton Green and I have arrived at and this is the actual common. I think I'm gonna fly my drone here because this is the only place where it's not full of green grasses. I'm gonna find out the history of Tuting Back. And in this drone clip, I will be telling you about the history of Tuting Back. At the time of the Doomsday Book, there were two Tuting Manus. The more northerly of the pair was given by William the Conqueror to Richard of Tonbridge, who in turn endowed it to the Abbey of Notre Dame du Bec in Normandy. There is speculation that the monks of Bec may have established here a priori assessment coalesce in the 12th century. But if this is the case, its site has not been located. By the 16th century, Tutingback was the largest village in the parish of Shretton, and the manor passed through various monastics and secular hands before and after the Reformation, ending up as part of the Duke of Bedford's extensive holdings in the era. The Metropolitan Board of Works acquired Tooting Back Common in 1873 and poor drainage delayed suburban development until the problem was overcome in the late 19th century. At that time, the grandest villa was Park Home, which may have occupied the site of the medieval manor house. Tooting Back Islam was built in 1903 on a site of another building referred to as a manor house, but lacking historical justification for the name. Tooting Back Little opened in 1906, and the South London Swimming Club was formed there the same year. The pool is the widest in Europe and one of South London's most delightful leisure amenities. Park Home was demolished in 1924 and replaced by the Bell Estate, named after the house's last owner, Eliza Bell. Tooting Back Station opened in 1926 and originally as Trinity Road. However, it was changed to Tooting Back afterwards. And Back School was founded in 1926 and amalgamated with the adjacent Hillcroft School in 1971. The United School has since evolved to become Ernest Bevan College. Lastly, Tooting Back Island closed in 1995 and its site was redeveloped by Fairview Homes. So there is actually a Tooting Back Common Cafe here and they actually sell ice cream. I have arrived at Wandsworth Common. 
I am pretty sure there is like a pond here as well. So I'm just gonna go to the pond and then I'm gonna leave because my legs are getting a little tired now. Just arrived at the pond and actually this pond is quite pretty. I might take a photo here and I also flew my drone here. I learned that one's worth common was once all one piece and contained within an area comprising Battersea, West Heath, and Wandsworth East Heath, not then called Wandsworth Common. It was owned by the Earl Spencer and called Wasteland because it was not suitable for agriculture, but people were allowed to collect wood, graze cattle, and dig gravel. Wandsworth Common today is a haphazard collection of no fewer than 12 pieces of varying size, some of which are not thought of as Wandsworth Common, even by many locals. The present common is roughly the same overall shape as the original, but its anchorage is less than half the original, with chunks cut out to mainly to building including Wandsworth Prison, Emmanuel School, and the Royal Victoria Patriotic Building. The rest of the reduction and fragmentation was caused by the construction of the railways from Clapham Junction in the mid-1800s, and the construction of Rose popular protests brought a halt to further encroachments with the signing of the ones of Common Act and the 150th anniversary of the Act. The 1860s was a defining moment for the Common. The railways, the expansion of London, and the fourth Earl selling of parcels of the Common, which resulted in into a public ground. The detailed legislative path is complicated. But most significant was the creation of the London County Council, which became the owner of the common, beginning the transition from rubbish strewn and camped space to today's island of tranquility. The common has 12 separate sections, and the largest contiguous piece runs from Bellew's Road in the southwest and follows the railway line that passed the main link to the Skylark Cafe and onto the edge of the Fitzhugh Estate, John Archer Estate and Emmanuel School. Just beyond is the Royal Victoria Patriotic Building. Built in 1857 to house, educate, and train orphan daughters of military personnel who died in the Crimean War. During World War II, it was used as a hospital with numerous additional huts and tents on a common. Oh my gosh, I think they think I have food. And then a dog started barking at me whilst I was flying my drone. I don't know why. Mm, there's another pond here. I want to take a photo here. With My legs are feeling less tired now because I actually rested for about 20 minutes and I just searched how to get back to my home and it says a 49 minute walk. If you enjoyed this vlog, don't forget to subscribe, like, share with your friends and let me know down in the comments section below if we actually ended up going to any of these places because of the vlog and I'll actually take a rest tomorrow because I think it's gonna rain anyways. Anyways, I am gonna see you all with another traveling vlog or music related video. Bye! I saw these beautiful graffiti. I saw these beautiful graffiti here and this is on Wandsworth Bridge so I'll let you guys appreciate it.